Mountain golf courses are, by nature, spectacular and just as challenging. Furry Creek in British Columbia, Canada fits that mould perfectly. Located less than an hour away from Vancouver, the course was also famously used in the movie Happy Gilmore, the stage for Bob Barker to show Happy who's boss at the Pepsi Pro-Am. But locally, the course is known for being beautiful but deadly. Prior to my round, I was warned to pack my bag full of old golf balls and leave the Pro V ones at home. Target golf is the name of the game here. Tight fairways and blind greens mean that while the scenery is a pleasurable experience, the number on your scorecard probably won't be. What's going to be a good score today? Most people don't shoot their career around at Prairie Creek unless they've played it multiple times in the season. Just course knowledge is so valuable here. You know, I think you should set your sights on 85 and okay. don't let yourself break 90. The course has a restaurant and stocked pro shop, but not too much in terms of practice facilities. As you drive to the first tee, there is a practice green and hitting net, so at least you can loosen up a bit. But with real estate, a true commodity here, space is limited. While I warm up with a couple of swings, let's let Brad give us a rundown of the iconic first hole. Number one's gotta be one of the more daunting tee shots uh, in the province. Ball's gonna drop 180 vertical feet down to the fairway. Pick your 175 club. And I listened to his advice. Gonna go six iron. I think that's like my 170 club. But I didn't catch it that well. It wasn't looking good and I couldn't even see it land. So, I hit a provisional, and what do you know, the same thing. Now, there is a lateral drop rule here on this course for this exact reason, but I didn't find this out until a couple of holes later. So I hit a third provisional shot, but this time with a four iron, and worryingly, that looked like it came up short as well. But after driving down the winding path, I found all three balls in play. So the six iron got us down here, that's not bad. 120 to the flag, a little bit into wind. Not the best lie for the second shot, but I was pretty much pin high in two. That was terrible lie. A delightful little chip onto the green gives me a cruisy tap in for par. And we're level after one hole. Ah, make par. What a first hole though. Yeah, that is amazing. Five iron would have been the perfect club. The 180 club. It's 138. The pin is at the back. An 8 iron will go too far, and I've got no 9 iron. Oh yeah, something I should mention. My Apex Pros had arrived, but I was missing a few clubs with supply delays. Okay, back to the video. So we're just gonna hit and hope with the pitching wedge. Oh my god. The pitching wedge comes up very oh. short after poor contact, and I'm left with a tricky chip. Despite it almost going in, I've overcooked it completely and still not on the dance floor. The effort back is far more controlled and with an easy tap in, I... We had to have the flag in and it was wonky in the hole. We're gonna call this a four and move on. You feel the same way? Great, let's just have some fun. The par five third is probably the widest fairway on the course and I pulled out the new big stick and put one right into the middle of the fairway. Oh yeah, new big stick. Yeah, you'll see more about that in a future video. So make sure you hit the subscribe button to keep up with my future uploads. Now this hole might feel like a bit of a grind with it going uphill so much. My forearm leaves me about 100 yards left into the hole. So after pulling out a gap wedge, I put it onto the dance floor. The strange thing was that all day I felt like I was hitting it so bad, but the score I ended up with might actually surprise you. Check out how tall this monster flag is. It's bending over under its own weight. I made the junior mistake of leaving the birdie putt short, but still left the green with a solid par. What's better than one par five? You've guessed it, two par fives in a row. And even better than that is crushing another drive with a perfect draw into the tightish fairway. Now, this is where the magic really starts to happen. I pulled out the seven wood. Yes, seven wood, I know, subscribe, you'll hear all about it. I hit the best bad shot I could have, hitting it right out the bottom of the club face, but it turned over perfectly, leaving me still in play. So you really will rely on the GPS in our golf carts. Anywhere you are on the course, it allows you to just touch the screen. If you say, I think I like the looks of playing to this fat area of the fairway, just give it a tap, and from your golf cart, it'll tell you at 145 or what have you. 
Left with maybe 170 yards into the hole, I just grabbed the six iron and hoped for the best. Oh, what? That reaction was because I'd hit the car path just in front of the green. <laughs> Hold on, have I bounced like <laughs> onto the green? Yeah, I think it wasn't the best strike. No, I'm in perfect position. <laughs> this is the, the luckiest round of all time. Watch me chip in for birdie. That, that would just toast this. I play the most perfect chip imaginable and somehow I've made it out of here with a par. Wow. And the par, look at this. The par three fifth feels like somewhat of a token hole, but gives one of the best views of the house sound on the course. Playing 107 yards today, I hit a gap wedge just to the left of the green. Six. The lag putt up to the hole could not have gone any better and I tap in for another par. That's right, I'm one over through five holes. Would you believe it, a par five awaits for you yet again on the sixth. This is where the course architect has really made use of the surroundings as you start to work your way up the mountain. This hole has a ravine about 200 yards away from the back tees, so a driver for me is probably gonna land me in some trouble. Deciding to play it as a three-shotter, I lay up with my four iron, but end up in the right rough. That was so lucky. Basically bounced back into the fairway. <laughs> Why is this round? So now we're here. We wanna get to like, oh no, four iron again? Pulling out a six iron, Things don't go to plan, and my ball is in the ravine. Now, there is actually a local rule that says if you hit it in this ravine, you can go to the drop zone on the other side. If only I'd known that before. I got onto the green with my fourth shot, and two putt to round out this hole with a bogey six. The seventh is an outrageously short par four, with the card even saying it's 238 yards. And when I checked with my rangefinder, that's exactly the number that I got to the flag. Hitting a three would somewhat okay, I was surprised to see it come so far short of the green. I've since played this hole with others, and driver gets you onto the green. It definitely plays longer than the number that you might get. Tricky one. I always want to bump and run it. Uh, win. I try to play a bump and run, but it goes terribly wrong and barely makes it to the fringe. I chose poorly. This time the eight iron bump and run that I've been practicing comes up gold. And I roll in a little tester for par. Yeah. <laughs> the par and off we go. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> the par three eighth is one of the toughest holes on the course from the back tees. A really tight shooting window is the stuff of nightmares for my natural right to left shot. Well, we're down there, we're out of trouble. Just call that completely thin. And might be into the window, I don't know. We're also driving a buggy, which is yeah. kind of confusing everything. Thinking I'm Phil Mickelson or something, the flop shot is too strong and it rolls a long way past the flat. Putting two and two together, I figured that the putt back would therefore be slow and uphill. How wrong I was, completely blowing this hole, and I'm in for a terrible double bogey. Oh, it's a five. No! The computer's gonna be like, you must have made a mistake. You can't possibly have made a five on that hole. <laughs> Job be great is if it talked to you, kind of like Kit from Night mm -hmm. Rider. Mm -hmm. It's time to finish off the front nine. I had no idea what to do here, but looking at the sign, there was clearly a creek in front of the green, and taking no chances, I laid up with a cruisy four iron. Ninety-nine yards to the green. As I pop this approach perfectly pin high here, we must pay our respects to the master of the running swing. For here was where the legendary scene took place, where Mr. Gilmore and Mr. Barker rolled around until one bested the other. The view is off the charts up here, but unfortunately, that doesn't help me get my first birdie of the day. Another short par three greets us on the 10th hole, and the back tees today were moved up quite a bit, and we're playing from about 120 yards. My wedge comes up short, and I'm left with a tricky chip. Ooh, ooh. Downhill all the way to the hole, I had no chance but the putt goes back in to save a bogey. 
The 11th is one of my favorite holes on this course. The tee shot does look a bit intimidating, but clearly not that intimidating as I rip one straight down the middle, giving myself a chance to get on in two. Look at this hole. Oh, I've hit it to the most primo position of all time. This is part five. Oh, we're getting on in two. That's ridiculous. This is insane. Magic Heart of Destiny says 185, but we know that it doesn't take into account slope. It's gotta be seven wood. The contact Ooh. felt good enough and the ball was on its way. I gave a modest reaction as I thought my ball had landed <laughs> perfectly and was sure I was on for two. We're playing three <laughs> okay. Love the bit, bit out of the bottom, but you got that. Being the most spawny person in the entire world. Spawny? Yeah, it means like lucky. No. Where's it gone? Bunker? But after I got up to the green, there was no ball to be found. It made it! Didn't we see it? I'm pretty sure I saw it come up here. Yeah. We saw it back. But after a quick bit of hunting, it turns out I had come up about a foot short and was in the heavy rough. Oh, oh it's here. Oh. Ah, maybe I didn't hit it as well as I thought. Yeah, I was like one yard away from perfection, I guess. What a disappointment. Straight up hacking it out, what do you know, we might have a candidate for the best shot of the day. Well, we've got an easy tap in for a birdie here and we can make off with it. Oh, crap. Do you know what I like about this golf course the most? Everything really is about full send, but full send with deadly accuracy. 240 yards. The 12th is an epic downhill short par four. There is no other option but to go for it, and we're looking about 230 yards downhill from these tees today. So the three wood comes out again. Now, I was sure I'd hit this clean, but we couldn't see it land. Oh, I think I'm sure. So I hit a provisional, which went miles all the way to the back of the green. Oh, there is another one right there. Where? Right beside the bunker. Pin oh. high. I chip on, and finally, we've made our first birdie of the day. Come on! The 13th is easily the hardest hole on the course. You have to be straight down the middle with no room for error either side, which I do not achieve at all and miss one miles right. There is a drop area just over the creek by the tee box, which I presume is for this exact situation. I lay up with my third shot, as all I can see is doom down the fairway. Pitching on, it just runs over the back of the green. And I tap in for the second double bogey of the day. Oh, double. Whoa! Oh, Whoa. Do you think you can do a three point turn in here? Like an awesome <laughs> <laughs> Now, what can I say about the 14th? It has to be one of the most epic par threes you'll ever see. Playing about 210 yards to the pin, it really looks like you're hitting it right into the ocean. But I pull off one of the best shots of the day with a seven wood and I'm pin high just off the green. We're safe. I play a delightful chip on. and roll in the putt for a truly epic par three. <laughs> At seven over par with four holes left, we might actually get to see a pretty tasty score here. The 15th is one of two remaining par fives, so there's some shots to be gained here. Not the greatest drive, but I'm in the fairway with a chance to get on in two. Unfortunately, I borderline shank one into the trees on the right. I did end up finding it and had a clear window to the green but I have a nightmare and hit a tree. <laughs> We're still not out of the woods here and the fourth shot is a flyer right over the back of the green. Too far. I play this downhill lie chip shot probably as best as I could have ever imagined and make a miracle up and down. That is an incredible bogey. That, that, is, that is bogey of the day right there. Wow. Where are we going now? We just, this course is just all over the place. How epic is this hole? The highway is right there, but it's just this channel of trees. 
I don't hit my 7-iron quite out of the middle of the club face, but I do find the green. Low-key, I've been playing quite well today. I haven't, like, holed anything, but everyone has, like, gone near the hole. And I back up that bold statement with a perfect lag putt. Go. Go. A knock-in for my par. Par on a par three. Come on. Now, be very wary of the 17th when you play it. It might look simple off the tee, but it's very tight and has the most incredibly undulating fairway. I played it safe by taking a four iron off this tee. Oh, no. And it backfires with a horrible duck hook straight into the hazard on the left. And classically, my provisional is right down the middle of the fairway. Damn it. Luckily, I found the first tee shot just in the heavy rough. So I take my drop, pull out the seven wood, but catch it a bit thick. I've still got a ways to go here to the green with my fourth shot and my right foot slips on the uphill line. Finding the ball, I chip it out, then completely shank it into the long grass to the right of the green. I shanked it. I do the best with what I've got for shot number seven, miss the eighth by a country mile, and finally roll it in for a scorecard crippling quadruple bogey. Got it in the hole in the end. <laughs> that is the funniest thing of this whole day. If you've played here before, you'll know how good it is to score an 80 on this course. Trying to fight back the tears of misery on the final hole, a steep uphill dog leg to the left. I hit my forearm right out the middle with the perfect baby draw leaving myself about 150 yards up the hill with slope. The ball rolled just off the back and I lagged the putt up to perfection. Rolling in the final putt for a par and a score of 84, 12 over. Oh, what could have been? This course is definitely not one you'd want to play every week, but once a year will provide something completely different to what you're used to. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure you give it a like and hit the subscribe button to be notified of my future uploads. And hey, let me know in the comments below what you've scored if you've played here before. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the course.